Hello and welcome to Technically Speaking, where scientists and engineers come together to chat about a common interest, share knowledge and satisfy some curiosity. I'm Jasmine and today I'm joined by Antonia and Ellie to talk about cyber hacking and cyber security. So why are we talking about this? Uh, so I was listening to another podcast about cyber hacking and it gave me an idea and I thought, you know what, this would be a cool thing to talk about with your friends. I'll take that. I mean, I know nothing about cyber hacking or cyber security, really, apart from what you see on TV and movies, which, as we all know, probably isn't what actually happens. Uh, apart from what I get emailed periodically in the year from work being like, update your passwords, do better, uh, use two-factor authentication, do better. <laughs> do don't better. Get hacked. Just don't uh, get hacked. <laughs> that's it. That's all I've got. And don't you've got anything more? Well, yeah, like Jasmine said, it'd be a fun thing to talk to your friends about. I think I was at some party or some social event and I met someone who works at a company that hacks other companies on purpose to then tell them you are vulnerable. Wow. Okay, I see that. That's a good idea, I guess. You've got to know your weaknesses to make them better. Yeah, so up until that point, I only knew what Ellie knew. <laughs> <laughs> Literally nothing. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so cyber hacking is essentially once when a person breaks into a computer system or server, uh, with either with the intent of stealing something or for some kind of malicious intent, which we can go into later if anyone is interested. Um, but the people who do these types of hacking they're called hackers or cyber hackers in particular and interestingly um there's they they have different types of cat of different types of hackers uh which i'll refer to as like a color and then a hat so the kind of hacker that antonia mentioned where they actually hack other companies that is known as a white hat hacker or an ethical hacker so their job is essentially to identify weaknesses in a company's like online system uh so it so that they that company can then put in measures to make themselves stronger and less vulnerable to cyber attacks because if uh someone does attack them and hold their website hostage or steal the information it's pretty bad for business is that the goal then is to get like i don't know names and addresses or people's records of what they've purchased online or bank details like what they actually are yeah so it's lots of different things it depends on like the individual hacker because they're kind of like scammers um they want to like right. get something f for a reason so uh personal information which or just data which they can then sell um if they can get onto a computer and access financial records and obviously they're going to rob you <laughs> i see that yeah She's i mean not good these people are i guess criminals i suppose yeah, they are essentially criminals because um, cyber hacking is, strictly speaking, illegal. But the white hat hackers, because uh, they're ethical hackers and they've been given permission to hack onto someone's system, um, that is not illegal because they've been given permission. But hacking into someone's computer or system without permission is illegal and is punishable with prison time. <laughs> but only if you get caught. Yeah, only if you get caught, which is why hacking <laughs> is really tricky because a lot of hackers like to remain anonymous. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I mean, I guess all criminals want to not be caught, don't they? So that's yeah, an obvious statement. They but... do. You said white and black hackers, but then the company that I, someone I may have met or not met, in case I need to cover up their identity, worked for a company that sometimes didn't get permission beforehand. It's like they got retrospective permission because they were doing that company a favor by identifying their weaknesses and telling them rather than i don't know blackmailing them for it where does that fall in to your categorizing uh, your categories that would then be called a gray hacker which is really creative because it's a mixture of white and black so they hack but not for the attention of like stealing but more for just so they can go to companies and say hey we found these things that you should probably fix and they'll either do it like because ethically they want to they want that company to actually 
fix our problems or they want money so they'll be like yeah I um I've identified these issues but I won't tell you what they are unless you pay me money that is a bold business strategy isn't it to be like it is hi company b I'm company a and I've hacked you uh your defenses aren't very good pay me lots of money to fix your problems like that I mean I guess they could say no right they've got no uh I mean, they could say no, but then they're risking, they're, they're risking quite a bit if what was found is quite severe. But then again, they could just have their in-person team then go in and figure out what, what was yeah, found. Yeah, that's true. I wonder how hard it is to know, uh, like if you get told you have such and such a problem, how hard is that to fix unless you're one of these companies hacking other companies ethically? I was going to say, Antonio, did your friends give you any insights into like what the job is like of being a hacker not not your friend the guy that you met <laughs> or didn't meet yeah this person i met they they said sometimes it just involved trying different things um sometimes it was as simple as getting the website source code or sometimes they I guess person hacked because they would have asked for information that might help them figure out where to go from there. Kind of like manipulating uh, you know, kind of like guessing the what's that word? You know when you do online banking and there's a question they ask you it's usually like so if there was a version of that they might be able to work it out sort of inferred that way but it was not necessarily for that application it was for a different thing yeah there's like quite a few ways that hackers can like hack onto systems there's generally things like malware that's something that can be used um I'm guessing there are other ways, though. Yeah, I'm sure there must be. Yeah. I think we've all, like, our age have come across malware because in the early days of the internet, there were free things that you could get, but but when you download it, along came something else that you didn't want. <laughs> no, it is. Someone has to make it, then they have to convince someone to actually open it and install it on their computer, and then boom, they got access, and that malware can do whatever it was designed to do. I feel like the old classic computer virus is that still a thing? Does that count as hacking, or is that just some bug on the internet? Yeah, but yeah, uh, the other one that I'm still surprised is still a big thing is phishing emails because. Wow. Yeah, that was I feel big. like being told as a kid, like, don't download that because you'll get a virus and then it'll wipe all the pictures we've got from our holidays. Or like just, you know, silly things like that when you didn't really understand what it was all about. <laughs> or when they're pretending to be your bank. Oh, that is huge. I get so much spam. Like you've won a prize or you have a connected with a Kenyan prince who wants to give you a million pounds <laughs> convincing have you had the ones from say an IT team and they made a phishing email to see if you would click on it and then basically flag you as Gullible. possibly a weakness <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's so clever and, and you get put on some training Wow, no, I haven't had that. Now I'm going to be extra on the lookout. But that's such a good idea, though, because then you really see when, you know, which people are vulnerable or how easily people are convinced by silly things. Yeah. So obviously with, like, phishing, if you like, you can identify that it's a phishing email, then you can eliminate the threat of being hacked. But there are other ways of protecting yourselves online. So obviously with malware and like viruses, there's antiviral software and stuff. I remembered another type of phishing that I've seen um, where one of the contacts I have in has been hacked or had some 
some way they've managed to get into their email and then they spam files out and they it looks like a link and they said oh here is the document you asked for and <clears throat> and it will be something i don't know i don't download them but the fact that someone that i might not speak to every day but could reasonably send me emails with files in if i wasn't paying attention boom i just got malware or fished so they're masquerading as your colleague essentially yeah well they're people from external to my company as well so it got through our filter I mean, sometimes if they can hack onto an account, then they then that's a pretty easy way to just like send out like phishing emails or malware through just basically emailing everyone in their inbox. Because that's happened a few times at my work. But yeah. So obviously with like phishing emails, if you can, I often identify if it's a f- dodgy email and a dodgy link, then that's one way of protecting you. And with like malware and stuff, there's antiviral softwares that will, well, hopefully uh, protect you from having to deal with viruses and malware. But there are some other ways of protecting ourselves online. Uh, stuff like encryption and two-factor authentication, like they're supposed to be pretty effective. They are, but they... I find them a pain in the ass. I'm going to be honest. I'm sure many IT professionals are rolling their eyes now, but I just think I I can't be bothered with two-factor authentication. It's me. It's always me. No one else. Also, I do think that there's not much, apart from like bank details or like actual money, there's not much that people don't already know. Like Google must know so much data on me. Like there's not much worth stealing. Like, if I was a cyber hacker, I wouldn't be targeting us. I'd be going, you know, NASA or NATO or MI6 or something instead. Not that I would be a cyber hacker, obviously. Or succeed. I suppose that's where Jasmine was saying how if you can get someone in a in your address book, it could be convincing enough because that's happened to someone in my family where... Someone else they knew WhatsApp them and said, hi, I need your help. And then from there, she got scammed out of some money. So it it might not be the initial information that they want out of you, but then they've kind of gained a trusted account, maybe. Yeah, I suppose they've used it as like a stepping stone, haven't they, to like spread more like a cascade effect of like okay we've had this one person now we have access to all their address book or all their whatsapp we can then you know keep going and then it's just snowballing yeah that's also happened a few times um with like twitter accounts or with like instagram accounts so i think it was in 2020 or maybe um earlier than that but uh um oh yeah it's in july 2020 uh, hackers took over more than 130 high-profile Twitter accounts like Barack Obama, Joe Biden, Jeff Bezos, e- Elon Musk, uh, as well as like companies. Um, basically, they used these Twitter accounts to promote a Bitcoin scam. Oh my god! Yep. Wow, that's pretty impressive to do like a targeted, you know, let's hit all these people, hundred people, or whatever, and then really. But push I could it also out. imagine how effective that is because of the kind you know websites websites pop up all the time and it can be quite hard to trace back well i was gonna say i wonder how many people fell for it like if they're you know following elon musk on twitter and he tweets do this bitcoin thing are people getting sucked into that yeah i would feel like it would depend on the person but i think if like barack obama <laughs> was trying to push bitcoin i think people be like this looks weird yeah Yeah. but some other people were like "Eh, it could be legit yeah it's true isn't it i definitely depends on your like perception of that person and what they normally tweet and whether it like follows on how much money did this person scam out of people or this organization i am not sure but i can look it up 
Because people spend a lot of money on cryptocurrency now. Is it still going? No. So it says that... No, I think it ended, but apparently um, it got $110,000 in transactions. That's not that much. So it's not that much, but still, people lost $110,000. Yeah, it's true. To a Bitcoin scam. I've just found a BBC News article. They were 17 years old at the time. It's always 17-year-olds. This is what I see in the media about hackers, is that it's always teenagers that are like, I'm going to hack whatever system or whatever company. And they're the ones that do it. And I did. I wasn't hacking anyone at seventeen. So how have they got? How have they got this far? There was, I'm sure, the like was it like Transport for London or TfL or something like that was hacked by a seventeen year old a few years this year or something. I'm sure, I was reading that. Yes, a seventeen year old boy was arrested with a cyber security incident, mm. and it was yeah Transport for London, and it was five thousand customers' sort codes and bank accounts. Ooh. Names, emails, and home addresses. So that's pretty extreme. This Experian report that I found doing a forecast to 2025 said that the average age of someone arrested for cybercrime is 19 years old compared to 37 for any other crime. That's so young. Is it because we are now, well, not even us, but I guess... Gen Z or whatever's after Gen Z are the online generation. Are they just better equipped to get into the mainframe of the internet? I don't know. Yeah, it could be, especially if yes, yeah, especially if it's the like people our generation who are responsible with trying to keep everything online safe. Yeah, I suppose so. That's true, isn't it? Because we were growing up with the rise of the internet. But people older than us didn't have it. They remember before the internet existed. Whereas kids, people born even in 2024, will have always had the internet and smartphones and all this technology. So maybe it's second nature, if you know how it works from day one, that you can manipulate it to how you how you like. But, I mean, obviously people get caught and it's a crime. So don't do that. Yeah, that is true. But, like... Do you guys think that in terms of like cybercrime, I know that you guys say that you're like very like low priority in terms of targeting, but do you feel like you know enough on how to protect yourselves online or do you think you could potentially get scammed or have your private information stolen? That's a good question. I think for things like phishing emails and scam emails, I'm pretty savvy. I wouldn't click on links and things like that. But I think if the company was targeted, like, you know, big scale, or sometimes you see those reports where it's like universities get targeted and like alumni data is stolen. What do you then do in that situation? That's what I would have no clue on. It's like, oh, you get an email from, I went to Reading, saying we've had a security breach, data's been stolen. What do you do next? Can you do anything? Yeah, it's really tricky because there's not really much you can do because once the data's stolen, it's been stolen. Antonia, remember when University of Manchester got hacked? I don't actually because I get so many emails about we've had this data breach, our servers got hacked. It it washes over me at this point. Well, University of Manchester got hacked and they stole a bunch of data. And um, yeah, but for alumni, they only stole our like addresses apparently. They, well, that's they probably, did not steal any okay. financial information. That's what oh, they. Okay. That's what they clarified in the email. There was no financial information stolen on the alumni. Yeah, but they um, most definitely got our addresses. So Is that contact details? Should we be worried that cyber hackers have our addresses? Like they're not going to show up at our doors, are they? They're just going to sell our information to like m- marketing yeah. agencies. I don't know what they do with yeah. it. Yeah, I think most of it just gets bought, and then you get spammed. But the thing is that. You can then get targeted by people who like scam via other means, right? So, like, cool the Nigerian prince. Mm. I heard they caught the person behind the Nigerian prince, the OG Nigerian <laughs> prince. Surely, there's more yes. than one. 
<laughs> okay, maybe at least one of the people who was behind that email um chain letters remember chain letters yes oh my goodness yeah. and like if you broke it it would be like seven years bad luck or some rubbish well weren't they also a form of scam sometimes yeah i think they probably were because Back in I th- the early early internet days. i think they started as like oh a nice thing let's spread this message to as many people as possible and then obviously like all good things it got you know made worse and then it was a good way of getting, I guess, addresses and email addresses out of people. So maybe, yeah, maybe that was a part of an original scam. I wonder what the first one was. Do we know? Like the first ever cyber attack? I think I heard about this. I think it was a let like, it, you know what, actually? I think it was in my data protection training from work. Okay. And they said the first scam or hack yeah hack they called it was actually a letter scam wow it kind of performed the same way as what we consider cyber crime these days oh it was the worm yeah the morris worm do you know about this i do not know (laughs) so basically before the internet was the internet there was a thing called arpa net it's probably got a better name than that and then um i think it was like a university graduate student or someone like that they like put a worm on these computers that had the early internet version and then it like caused a lot of damage and the guy got like fined and like rejected from university and stuff but it was like it was a legit thing it's like famous the morris worm um for being like a malicious internet program that affected people I don't know what it did. I don't know if it just shut down the computers or if it or was did it like... delete data? Yeah. That was what a lot of early um, viruses did. They corrupted data. Oh, apparently it didn't destroy files, but it slowed down the network massively. So, like, you couldn't send emails. It was, like, a complete problem to use then those computers. Uh, apparently, the damages started at estimates of a hundred thousand dollars and then soared into millions, given the like severity of the attack. Wow, there we go. The Morris worm did they ever catch the guy who created Oi and only said it was a university student? Ellie said that. Yes, they did. Oh, they Ellie did said catch it was him. a university student. They catch him cool. and find him and sent him to prison, I think. Yeah. yeah, okay, cool. So obviously, like, we feel like our, we ourselves, in terms of protecting our own data, we feel pretty okay because we know what a phishing email looks like. We've done data protection courses, but in terms of what companies who have our sensitive and very, very valuable information uh, are doing in terms of protecting our data, um... Do we what 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 do we think on that? So Antonio, you mentioned the guy that you met who works for hacking other companies. Uh, but what else can companies do to protect themselves so that the information that they have on other people just doesn't get stolen? So uh, one of the most common data breaches, according to a cybersecurity survey by the UK government. Said it's mostly through phishing. Oh, <laughs> I've stopped clicking on those dodgy email links. I feel like we can do better. Surely there must be more than just phishing. What happened to like the movies where they're like desperately typing code into computers as they hack into, you know, desperately trying to guess your passwords? Yeah, so 84% of businesses um, experienced. A phishing attack. That's so high. But is that really my I guess there's a lot more low effort than actively hacking. I just remember, you know, like Mission Impossible or like one of the spy films where they've got a team in a van and they're hacking the building so that they can open the doors, the like security doors, so like James Bond can run through 
and like not set off the alarms. Are people doing that? Is that a real thing? Or do I need to speak to someone at MI5 to find out? I think it is something that you can do because there was a hack where someone was hacking ATMs and making them just dispense. That is a great cash. hack. I mean, go straight to the source, surely. If you want cash out of it, then you don't have to faff around selling people's data. Just hack the ATM. Solid. But there's a lot of security around an ATM. Just straight up, there's a camera. So if they start noticing this person going to every single ATM... Do you have to physically or do who's it? who's watching it? Can you remote log on to an ATM? Um, I think they did in the... I can't remember exactly what happened, but it was like a really interesting and old one. That's so impressive. Mm. I wonder how you get into cyber hacking. Do you have to just be really good at IT things? And have no moral compass. Not something I'm going to Google. Generally, most cyber hackers have really good computing skills. <laughs> so... The ATM hacking. <laughs> I'm not turning to a life of crime, guys. Don't panic. This is a purely educational guess. <laughs> uh, apparently you can use a malware attack. Okay, so there's like, net, you can get, if you can get into the bank's network, then you can manip manipulate the NTM software to steal cash. There's also malware attacks if you can affect the software that's on the actual ATM. But it's also just like using a ATM card reader. As well as something that's called jackpotting, which is using malware to make a t um, which is basically a, a type of malware that just interferes with the software to make the um, ATM dispense lots of money. Jackpotting is the one that I think is associated with the um, pictures or images of just ATMs just like spewing out cash. <laughs> I love this image. I think, yeah, I that's the thing. It's so much of stuff now is on the internet, right? Like. My washing machine could be connected to the internet, but I refuse. But, like, if you can hack an ATM, what, 20 years ago, now presumably you can hack anything connected to the internet, right? Like, I, someone could breach my network and hack my washing machine if they felt like it. Yeah, they could. Or they can just, like, steal your Wi-Fi because that's just annoying. Would they, oh, they could lock me out, couldn't they? That would be annoying. Ugh, that would be They could also do that, yeah. Also, just stealing your Wi-Fi. Isn't this just an issue as well with Internet of Things if people don't put proper internet security into those items? Or Bluetooth security, I guess. What's Bluetooth security? I don't know if, if you can make Bluetooth secure. Hopefully you can. Can other people hack your headphones then, if that's what you're saying? Like, wireless stuff now? Because... Do you reckon that's possible? Oh, here's another flash. That's just made me have a flashback to people saying that there are Bluetooth scams as well, where people would try and send you a file which would interrupt your uh, phone. Yeah, that's true. Do you have to accept those? I don't have an Apple phone. Yeah, I've had I've had the I've had someone trying to airdrop me something. I'm like, no, I don't know who you are. Imagine if you were just doing something else at the same time and you just accidentally yeah, click it. Yeah, you have the option. Oh, you get notified. That'd be terrible. To send you something and then you can either accept or reject. Right, fine, okay. Oh, I I accidentally accepted a scam phone call because it was on my watch and I couldn't because I had my phone in my pocket. So it was on my watch and I thought it was my watch just like because I have a smartwatch. I thought it was my watch doing that thing where it just like automatically wants to connect the heart rate monitor with my iPhone, which it weird thing that it does. So I was like trying to like get it to stop and then I accidentally clicked accept the call. <laughs> I was like, no. And I was like, no. Scam calls at least are pretty easy to immediately tell that you can be like, you can just hang up, right? When they have your number, but it's not yeah. the... Yeah, but then what if they've already stolen your information by th at that stage that you realise you've been scammed? I feel like it's just feeding into another, right? These You're being fished or hacked in the first place to seal your information and then they're just selling it to more companies that then want the same information. It's very strange. We don't understand the criminal underbelly what very then... well. I guess not. Yeah. Which maybe is... Because we're not nine... 
because we're not 19 year olds <laughs> Need to ask 19 year olds what's appealing about hacking? Money. Money. <laughs> Surely it must be money. I understand if you're getting money, like that does make sense. If that's the main motivator, then that makes sense. I wonder if there are any figures on how much hackers make per year. Or I suppose if you're. <laughs> <laughs> or... <laughs> I was just thinking, well, I don't think people make an annual income. They probably have one good payout, right? But it depends what you want. Like, are, you, are people trying to hack into, like, government things for state secrets or, like, to find out? Yeah, people have done that. Ooh. So in 2016, when it was the presidential uh, election and campaign, um, Hillary Clinton's aides, um, hackers targeted her aides through phishing attacks, which led to the leaks of thousands of her emails. Oh, okay. This Which is interesting. I'm sure most people remember because that was one of the reasons why people hate Hillary Clinton. So this is like, we haven't considered this as an option of like a personal attack or like a smear campaign or like a yeah a politically motivated, mm. you know, if you want someone to succeed and someone not to, you could hack the opponent and then release these emails and make them look bad or similar. Yeah. Ooh. That seems more malicious than just criminals trying to get money. Yeah, some of the, um, so like there's some like really malicious attacks that can happen. I think they are technically called red hat hackers because they're just evil. And it's they more do... like personal, I suppose. Yeah, it's more like crimey stuff. So like they're the kind of people who like target companies or individuals with the intent of like, um, stealing a lot of money or just doing a lot of damage. So, yeah, they're pretty bad. I suppose it's also slightly blackmail as well, then, because you could say, I've hacked into yeah. your emails, I've got all this dirt or things you don't want the public to know, or if yeah. you're a public figure, and then pay me lots of money, otherwise I'll just release it. Yeah, there is one case on that. I, mean, I don't think they were a famous person, but it's kind of how... Remember, do you guys remember the Ashley Madison... <laughs> Um, dating service slash uh, dating uh, online dating thing I think I heard about the hack rather than the actual yeah, website yeah so a guy was um, had his guy had his um, information stolen and they were trying the hackers trying to blackmail him by saying we know that you're having an affair oh. and we won't release it unless you uh, <laughs> pay us this ransom money wow that that was the whole conceit of the website, wasn't it? Actually, it was for extramarital yeah. affair. Oh, I see. So, so once you got anyone's information, you could just yeah. blackmail everyone using yeah, that website. Oh, apparently, there's going to be a Netflix documentary about it. I think that's where I heard about it. But isn't that the? But isn't Going back to Hillary Clinton's data hack or email leak, isn't that the ultimate bad data breach is on a national or international scale that could literally affect politics? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. What are they doing then? What are like Hillary Clinton's team doing to protect her data from that happening again now? Identifying phishing emails. Because <laughs> it was phishing emails. It all comes that got back them. to the phishing emails. Everything goes back to phishing emails. Oh my gosh. So, should we define what a phishing email is then for, for anyone listening in case they don't know what it is? Yeah, we probably should. <laughs> what? What? It's just an email with a dodgy link in, right? That is, is passed off to look legit. People got taken in, they clicked the link, bad things happen. Yep, uh, that, well, that's what I understand a phishing email to be. Antonia, do you also agree? Phishing email? Um, I think not only you, you, it has a link or a file and it somehow le steals your data or leaves you with something that can then steal your data like some software. Right. So it's like passed off to look quite good, 
you're taken in, you click the link, either then you download malware that steals your data or whatever's in the link, you input it in and you give it away without realising. Yeah, of like a good fake website that's pretending to be your bank account or pretending to be a government website, that yeah. kind of thing. So everyone be extra vigilant checking their emails this week and forever. This is what I've learned from this podcast that this seems to be the main way that we've like spoke about it multiple times that even if it's just someone trying to hack your Instagram or a big multinational organization, this is sort of their in, right? Yeah, I've heard so. Phishing emails are what will get you. And it's not the people like driving around in vans trying to hack into a building so they can like steal all the company's secrets. I'm quite disappointed to be honest. I was really picturing like you know people hacking in and turning off the lasers as James Bond parachutes <laughs> in from the ceiling and the doors not being able to open but the guys like really frantically typing and then just at the last second it goes green on you the access panel. can kind of do that. So there was a bug with... Um, sorry, that is a bug on my laptop. It'll go back <laughs> to the screen. <laughs> is it a phishing bug? Began Might long. be a phishing bug. Um, yeah, make yeah, sure was, you take think... your time before clicking on things. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, I think it was a bug with Ring, uh, the Ring doorbells, where people could use it to then hop, on, hop onto your Wi-Fi. Mm. And then they could just like oh. disable stuff and like I'll oh, just do stuff with your Wi-Fi. Could it unlock and your any front device door? that was connected? If you had a if you had a electromagnetic door lock, yeah, you could just open the door then. Yeah, for sure you it could if you've had that kind of door. Wow. But, yeah. Also, protect your Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness, going to change the password right now. Make sure you have a secure network and always be wary when you're on like free Wi-Fi networks because um, someone could hop into your phone. Wow. There we go. So like, so we talked about like how there's hackers who will hack for malicious intent, for, like stealing data or private information or stuff that could ruin political careers. But there are also like actual vigilante hackers. So these are like hackers who want to do like good. So an example would be there was this guy who was known as the most hated man on the internet called, um, what was his name? It's not Julian Assange, is it? No, his name was Hunter Moore. He had like, he was like notorious for revenge porn. And, oh my God. Um, yeah, so he got um, hacked by a group of hacktivists is what they call themselves. Oh, like called, hack, uh, hacking activists. Yeah. So he got attacked by a hacktivist group called Anonymous, who basically, um, because they hated him because he was like a terrible person. So they did stuff like basically like empty out all his bank accounts, like delete a lot of his personal records. Incredible. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. So they were like being the vigilantes. I'm with you now. They're like Batmaning him. Yeah, they were. And there was another one. So in like, there was a group of uh hacktivists who managed to hack onto some cameras uh managed to capture images of a russian um attempted attack to get into ukraine so that was another one. Oh, so they were on the side of ukraine to yeah. be like be like hey can... you got something here a sort defend, of defend warn them in advance yeah right defend, defend yourselves i so, see i see yeah so not all hackers are bad people some people some 19 year olds who are really good at like hacking decide you know what i'm not gonna try to steal money from people i'm actually gonna like help people <laughs> Put my i'm gonna hack for good I'm gonna hack for good that's a nice note to end on yeah i mean like if you could ha if you're really good at hacking what would you hack what would i hack oh this yeah. is I don't think I wouldn't go criminal because I just would get caught. I wouldn't be that good a hacker. Maybe I would hack for good. Maybe I'd. I don't know how I would hack for good, but I'd think of something. I'll try and think if there's any companies I don't like that I would be happy to steal from. But maybe I shouldn't admit that on uh, <laughs> on a public forum. Yeah, I think anything. I'm telling you what we, we say do. could be incriminating. 
<laughs> it could be very incriminating. I definitely lack the uh, computer know-how to be able to do that, so I don't think anyone's in any danger that I'm going to hack them. No, but you can definitely spot a phishing email. Remember, that's the one that counts the most. Maybe I'll make some sort of anti-phishing email software in my hacker ability. I'll, I'll hack the hackers. There we go. Ooh. <laughs> Maybe in-person hack them. Maybe they have don't expect anyone to hack them in person. I guess not. It's all lot in line. Are they in vans? Are they in basements? Where are they? Are they just normal people? It's just Ellie just knocking on their <laughs> van and they're like, Hi. Hi, do you want to buy my scout <laughs> you see you're hacking. <laughs> That's also a classic from TV, isn't it? Girl yeah. Scout cookies. Are you telling me that's that's not a scam now though, is it? No, I think it was a cover that people would use. Oh, I see. Right. I'm with In you. the movies. Wow. I'm really gullible. Okay. I need to be extra vigilant. That's what I've learned. Be extra vigilant. Don't click any links you're wary of. Phishing emails are clearly the devil's work. And use second f- two factor authentication. I'll never complain about it again. I, you know, I mean, I will, but at least I know what it's it's good for. Yeah. Cool. So we've gone over what cyber hacking is to different types of hackers, good and bad. Um, so cyber hacking is the act of breaking into a network or computer system to steal data, modify data, or even something more malicious. And these are carried out by people known as hackers. We've also gone over some of the things that you can do to protect yourselves online, like, as Antonia mentioned, two-factor authentication, very important, but also important is encryption. Uh, but do we feel like we can protect ourselves? Like, I feel like I do enough to protect myself personally, but for, like, companies, a whole nother story. But I like to think that they're getting better. Uh, but most importantly, like, if you yourself are concerned about staying safe online, especially from, like, hackers, uh, definitely take any data protection courses and you can do the stuff that we said we're going to do but well and you can also just look at more ways to protect yourself online so thanks for listening and we'll see you in the next episode the views expressed in this podcast belong entirely to the person that said them they do not represent any industry or organization if you enjoyed listening to these views it would really help us out if you could rate us leave a review and tell a friend this podcast was sponsored by no one but if you're interested in funding us to continue to have frank discussions about science and engineering please get in touch